Welcome to another episode of Around the 412. We are part of the Pod Hub Network. I am Tyler, and with me as always are Smitty and Herb. How's it going? What did you just do with your like hand as you were opening? I didn't see uh, this. What? What do you mean? You kind of folded your hand like right about here, and then just completely put it down. I don't know. It was like <laughs> I am Tyler. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I was talking with my hand. I don't know. Um, I thought you were Mormon, not Italian. Yeah. Italian? What? What? Italian. Oh, Italian. Talk oh, okay. I do it all the time too, though. Uh, I'm not, uh, there's not an ounce of I used to Italian in yeah, me. Yeah, before we started yelling at you all the time. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, plus it helps now that you have to actually keep your hand on the mic. If we had, like, the... Yeah, if we had that, we'd be <laughs> both. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, first things first, as we're going to be... Oh, man, we're going to be talking about this for a while, I just realized, with as early as we launched it. But, I mean, oh, from yeah. now till December, every episode, you're going to hear this at the beginning and the end. But um, we launched the Rock Around the 412 Year 2. Um, the pinned tweet is on our... Well, it's our pinned tweet on Twitter. <laughs> That's how I should have said it, I guess. Redundancy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, you can check out that. Uh, share it, please. If you can donate, that'd be great. Um, you can read what the, the mission is about this year. It's changed a little bit as opposed to last year where we, uh, you know, donated uh, toys and money to the uh, Aliquippa Specialty Pediatric Center. This year, the money is going to go to families to give their kids Christmas. So uh, completely different mission. Um, still a great cause and looking forward to doing it. Uh, if you do know of a family that you know that could benefit from that, uh, please reach out to us and nominate them. Um, but yeah, so I guess we can kind of jump into it now. Um, we haven't we haven't been here. We d- we didn't record when we were originally planning on it, so it's yeah. been a little longer than we thought. Um, actually, that's a good thing because a couple other things happened during that time that yes. now we can talk about. Um, but let's start in the NFL. Um, Melvin Gordon. Wants a new contract or he wants traded. And, I mean, he's a running back. So, obviously, like, for me, that's the one position where I am all for guys doing whatever possible to get their money. Because they have such a short shelf life. While you can get your money, you got to get it. Yeah. Um, But I don't – I just can't imagine him playing for anybody else besides the Chargers. And it just seems like it's a – and I'm not saying the situation went sour. You know, I feel like there's still, like, a mutual respect there. They understand that he just yeah. wants to get paid. Yeah. But – um, yeah, I just can't picture him playing anywhere else. I think that a deal will get done, but I'm just curious now as to what that means for, you know, when it's time for, like, a, a Bosa extension, Derwin James, these other guys that they actually got to spend on that play a premier position. Yeah. Like, you don't want to break the bank on a running back. No, they're expendable. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, Melvin Gordon came out and said that they aren't, like, <laughs> the, the great running backs aren't expendable. Yeah. But the thing is... And I understand you're taking up two more roster positions by doing it, but there's a lot of teams not going with two or three guys that do the same things that yeah. one guy does. Just a committee. And and giving you that same production, but as multiple guys as opposed to one. Now, you know, obviously, like I said, you're taking up more roster spots to do it, but you're also spending a lot less money on it, on yeah. the position. Plus, if he does get moved, I think Eckler's just going to... And that's another not, thing. Not be great, but be better than average, if that would make sense. Yeah, I, I really like Austin Eckler as I mean he, he had not to relate this to fantasy, but he had value last year behind yeah. Melvin Gordon, at least as a receiving back. Exactly. But even he cut off some big runs too. Um but mostly receiving. Yeah, and, and that's you know, again going to running backs for the most part seem like they're plug and play. Absolutely. I mean, there's obviously guys that stand out, you know, Saquon Barkley. Like you can't you're not gonna find another Saquon Barkley, just Ezekiel Elliott, but but, yeah, what I'm getting at is I'd rather not pay big money for a running back and have two or three guys do it than pay a running back. That's why, to me, it's like a blessing in disguise that Le'Veon never did accept one of those yeah. deals. Because the Steelers wouldn't have been able to do what they've done to help improve the defense, hopefully, this year. I mean, on paper, it looks good. Yeah. But and I know we actually talked about it not too long ago where um, the the power rankings actually only have them behind Chicago. In terms of oh, defense yeah. going into next year, and I, I mean, I can't, you know, I gotta wait and see it first before I buy into that. I I think that on paper they're definitely a top ten defense. No, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, think we said like six to nine range. Oops. Yeah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> but for me, I just there's a couple question marks, and if those are all, if those check the boxes, then it's a really good defense. Yeah, you know, is, is Bud Dupree going to? I don't. I, I'm not gonna say take the next step because I think we're past that point. Yeah. I don't think he's a complete bust. I just, I just don't Take think he's the, the first, next step on his fifth year. Pick. 
yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how <laughs> long are we waiting for? But he's Wait also – we. I was talking to Jamal yesterday, just talking about, like, how good of a spot he's in because, well, he's making $9 million this year regardless of what he does. Yeah. And then he hits free agency. And whether it's the Steelers that pay him or somebody else, you got an edge guy who – that's obviously a premium position that people pay for. And he's – I mean, I feel like he's, – he's not bad by any means. Like, some team is going to pay him. Yeah. He just didn't live up to expectations. For the, I don't know, seven or eight sacks that he's probably going to get this year. Yeah. Because he'll have one random, like, two or three sack game. You're not wrong. Like Man. he did uh, Cincinnati. Oh, was that last but season? Yeah. Mm, was it la- just I last season? I thought it was last season. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. He always puts that same video up. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so like you looked at that position, I think Sean Davis is another one. Yeah. Um, he's in a contract year as well. Um, and I think what it really comes down to between those two is you pay one of them. I don't, I don't think that they're both going to be here next year. Um, and if they both have really good seasons, it's going to be Bud Dupree because he plays the more premium position. Yeah. You know, it's hard to find guys to rush the passer. Sean Davis has been to this point pretty much a replacement level safety. Even though I like him, mm-hmm. you once again aren't going to break the bank for no. safety. Yeah, you pay none of them and draft Amar Hamlin. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, there it is. Um, and with Malvin Gordon, yeah, he's a good running back, but personally, I don't think he's a great running back. He's just so. Fast. I I mean I think he's probably like I don't put him so in the category with all the other quote unquote great quarter or running. So backs. you think he's the tier below? Probably. Melvin yeah. Gordon to me is the same level as uh Howard. Howard. The one that just got traded to the Eagles. Jordan, Jordan Howard? Jordan. Yeah. Uh, They're both I put fast, him above but Jordan Howard. But Melvin Melvin Gordon at least gives you something rece- like Jordan Howard's yeah. a two down back. Yeah. Melvin Gordon, because Austin Eckler's there, I mean, gives up something on third down. Mm-hmm. But I think that he could play all three downs. More than I, I don't think that he's yeah, I don't think he's Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott. I'm not sure how many guys are in that category anymore though. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm curious to see how David Johnson does in, in Kingsbury's new offense. Yeah. I think that, that could be really good. That'll um, be interesting watching the Cardinals. I, d- I think I personally I don't and this isn't, you know, me being biased as a Steeler fan, I don't see Le'Veon having the same obviously the same success with the Jets. Who's because the, the way that he wants to Sam Darnold. I think that he could be decent in terms of, like, if you're talking about fantasy from a PPR standpoint uh, because of the dump-offs, check-downs. Kind of like Saquon last year. But that offensive line is so bad there. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't address it the way that they needed to. They thought that they were going to, and the guy ended up signing with Carolina. But I – yeah, I, I, so I don't know how many upper echelon running backs there really are in the NFL that I would say that's somebody that I, I would pay just to be the number one. You know, I, have to worry about I was looking at backs. the Madden ratings, and Todd Gurley is the highest running back. And Todd Gurley, I don't know about that because anymore. of the knee issues. Yeah, that's I mean, what I'm saying. Obviously, that's another guy that you would have, you know, as a top three back coming into next season if there wasn't the the knee issues. And it's not something that like is just going to get fixed. We're talking about arthritis. Yeah, that doesn't go away. So I still don't think it's going to be that big of an issue this season. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I, but he bar- he didn't like didn't even play in the Super Bowl because I of it. think yeah. he could have similar. Production when he's on the field, but I think that's the thing is he's not going to be on the field as much. Yeah, he probably so won't have his base staff. I, I mean, they drafted a running back as well, um, Henderson, and I think it was like in the third third round. So, I mean, that's obviously like a pick that you – that's like when the Steelers took James Conner. It's insurance pick, sure, but that's yeah. also a guy that you're spending a decent pick on, you like so, something that you would address another position mm-hmm. otherwise. So they obviously feel like there is – a uh, need there. There's definitely reason to worry, especially because yeah. I don't think he's going to make the contract. No. Well, at least for this season, I still have faith. Do you put James Conner in the same category as Melvin Gordon? Hmm. Well, definitely not with Saquon and Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, no. At least yet. And the thing is, what's going to be tough for him is, even though I think he's very good, and I think he could be a three-down back, is he's not going to be. Yeah. So, you know, w- spending... The, the draft pick on Benny Snell and also already having Jalen Samuels. We saw how, you know, down the stretch, Samuels did take time away from him. Even when Connor was playing in the games, Connor mi- did miss some time. Yeah. But even when Connor was healthy, Samuels started to take some snaps away from him. Uh, Samuels is pretty a premier receiving back. 
Like, that's what his game is. I mean, he was a converted tight end and everything. But he also looked pretty decent as a running back. I mean, look at the game against the Patriots. Um, and Benny Snell, I think, could take away carries on the goal line, and that could affect Connor's touchdown numbers. Um, but just in terms of talent, I think Connor's definitely up there. I mean, the work that he's put in to become a legitimate receiving back is insane because he didn't have hands at Pitt. Yeah, I, I figured. Like, it, within from his senior year at Pitt to where he's at now, has been an incredible transition to become a receiving back. Did you see the story that came out this week with him? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, yeah, that's all. Was that next? Yeah, that was the very nice. next thing that I had Segways. on. Segways. So, so, yeah, um, you know, yeah, he definitely went to the doctors at the right time. And he, and it's weird, you know, you don't never know what the, like, the symptoms are. Yeah. He, like, when you, so he just said he always felt tired but couldn't fall asleep and Sleeping was dizzy. Yeah. And um, so, and he had already, he had, he had the knee issue at the same time, too. Yeah. So he was going to be, you know, checked on by doctors anyway, and he had to have the procedure and everything like that. And they found, you know, masses around his heart. And, like, these, th- he said there was a ton of them, and they were huge. At and the his rate doctor, they were growing, yeah. Yeah, and his doctor said that he ha- would have had a week to live had he not gone there when he did. Um, it, I mean, it's just an already insane story, comeback story, becomes even that much more. Yeah. You know, and, and at this point, I know that, you know, he even says he doesn't really like talking about it. You know, it's a different part of his life. He's just a football player now. Mm-hmm. Um, but fr- as a fan perspective, as a fan of him, as a fan of the Steelers, even if you're not a fan, just as a human being, it's it's inspirational. Yeah, absolutely. And it's an insane thing to hear about. Um, but, yeah, it just it's a reminder that, you're, you know, anything can happen. And yeah. Once again, just live for today. Um. Also, I guess this relates to the Steelers. Martavis Bryant applying for reinstatement. Huh. Um, man, I feel so like I I've seen very few people that are that physically gifted mm-hmm. be that and fucking and it's stupid. and it's a shame. I mean, it's not quite the same level as Josh Dorn because Josh Dorn's better than Martavis Bryant. Yeah, but just the physical skill set that and it's just so raw too. Like, it's unteachable the stuff that he the, what he was as a receiver. It's, it's if Met Metcalf could actually run routes. Yeah, essentially, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, uh, well, Martavis isn't quite that big. No, yeah. But, but yeah, the the size and... Physique I mean, is yeah. there. Um, but it's just, it's such a shame. And uh, obviously, I mean, I wish nothing but the best for him. I was kind of hoping, you know, not that Pittsburgh was a bad thing for him, but I was hoping the split with Pittsburgh would help him get back on track and realize this is, you know, my last shot here with Oakland. And it didn't. It, it didn't do anything for him. I mean, I don't know. I hate to say that he needs to you know, go to the right culture because he should be able to grow up on his own and just yeah. get away from that stuff. But it almost seems like he needs, you know, somebody to overwatch every move. And I don't know who that team would be. Because, I mean... I know. If you say the Patriots... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patriots won't, just won't deal with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. He needs to go to a very well-structured organization. Well, not the, so Let me tell you, the Raiders are not no. that organization. No. I mean, to me, I would think a team... Like Seattle, I think I think that Pete Carroll has a nice way of being a players' coach, but also putting in place you being know a hard ass. Yeah, yeah. This is how things are going to go. This is the Seattle Seahawks. Other than the fact that I don't know if you saw, this is not like new, but their uh, second round pick from was it just last year, Malik McDowell? He was like tased by a cop at a gas station, but was able to get back up and like charge the cop. Mm-hmm. You saw that? I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I saw it on Twitter. A oh. pretty crazy video to see him like sitting there in the doorway, get tased, and then he's able to get back up and like charge at the cop. That is a unit of a man. Yeah, <laughs> he's about Tampa tackle. Bay for Bruce Arians. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I feel like he might, might be a coach that could work with him, but still be on him about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just would be skeptical, even though you know we're talking more about the structure. Also, like the lifestyle there in Tampa and in Florida, like how does that fit with him? Would that yeah. you know be influential on? I feel him like Tampa's pretty dead though. Hockey town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine saying that the about the city season. of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Just dead. <laughs> um, you have quote unquote the best team, but can't win a playoff yeah. series. Shaking my head. Favorite to win next it. year. 
Are they? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course they are. Look at their roster. It's what? Them, the Leafs, Bruins, then Vegas? Uh, is Vegas that high? Yeah, Vegas I think Vegas is wow. second. Are they? Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. They, uh, they I, I, th- no, I thought the top three were all from the same division, like he said. I didn't think so. I thought that after St. Louis won, they, Vegas was second to win the cup. It was it was one of those. Two. Well, when when did you see it? Because this was li- like my dad was just telling me on like Tuesday it was like yeah, updated. I just oh. Columbus. Well, this was like Columbus after, after the, St. Louis won. Yeah, Columbus took the biggest fall. Yeah, really? Yeah, because they well, lost. Well, everyone. yeah, they, did, they don't have Single anyone. Doesn't want to come back. He signed uh. with Carolina. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. Nice hockey. They lost everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> anyway, um, getting back to football before we do talk about hockey. Yeah. Um, Jadavian Clowney, the deadline passed for him to sign a deal, which means. When and if he does sign the, f- to play this year, is to be on the franchise tag. Mm. Um, you know, last year with what we saw with Bell was kind of unprecedented. Yeah. Um, but you know, now that somebody has done that and was able to sign a deal in free agency, granted not what he wanted, mm. that Jadavian Clowney plays a different position. What are the chances that Clowney doesn't play this year now? That'd be wild. That would suck for the Texans. <laughs> hmm. I didn't even think about that. Because this is. You know, like we say, one of the more premium positions. You know, guys pay for – they'll pl- pay a premium for edge rushers. Yeah. You, you got to get your eyes – He's one of the best in the league. And, yeah, he's had – he kind of started his career pretty slow. But the last couple yeah. seasons, he's been what was expected of him. Mm. And now, you know, he's one year away from free agency. I could very well see him sitting out this year knowing he's still going to get paid in free agency. If he sits out this year, he's signing with the Patriots. Why do you think everybody's going to the Patriots? Because it's <laughs> funny and it makes people no, mad. Well, it, also, there, yeah. What's funny is that that was like a thing that was. It, did you watch when um, the pile of the pylon yeah. like did the lot? Yeah. yeah, they did like the. They included trades and stuff. Yeah, and they had him getting traded to the Patriots during that. That was a ballsy mm. pick, though. But I don't know. I I'm not saying he's going to sit out by any means. But he's a guy that I feel like could and still get paid yeah. in free agency. Oh, absolutely. I feel like for him it wouldn't matter as much. I don't know if a running back will ever do it again. Probably not. I still think it was stupid Le'Veon did. But like a position like edge, you're still getting paid. Yeah. Um, last thing in the NFL, I absolutely hate this. We kind of talked about it already oh. with the 18 games. Yeah. But they're talking about 16-game limits for players. So 18, we're talking about week schedule. Yeah, yeah, but each player can only play sixteen games. That's you can stupid. sit two wherever, whenever. That's stupid. So imagine having you know two starting quarterbacks, and when do you play these guys? Like it brings more strategy, obviously, yeah. to the game, and more guys getting jobs. I guess you'd probably have to add roster spots. But yeah, it, but I just I'm I'm not a fan of it. Play your best guys should be playing every single week. We shouldn't have to worry about. Ah man, Ben's already played fifteen games. <laughs> where be, where did we put his last one? Some alternate timeline this like, is happening. It, yeah, like, it honestly doesn't a, see. What if like, you're in a playoff race? Yeah, that's well, why it, you sit him the first two weeks. Hmm. Bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> yeah. It be just relating it to this year. Obviously, it's not an eighteen game season, but you sit him the first two weeks against New England and Seattle, and then <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're pretty much taking yourself out of a race before yeah. you even get in one. Um, I just. I can't even fathom this. That this is like a real like who came up with this? That's what I want to know. That's who's good. Jerry who's Jones? Idea and how has it even gotten to the level where people have to have a discussion about yeah. it? It's probably Jerry Jones, and he was like, "I'll give you people money." I, I I just don't understand what the point of it would be. Same. It makes no sense. I mean, the only <laughs> the only benefit for me would be like I'm a season ticket holder so I get to go to an extra game but I don't care yeah. about that <laughs> like I'd rather just be able to see the actual weird starters. flex the actual just flex and that he's a season yeah. ticket holder yeah I want to see the actual <laughs> guys that are supposed to be starting start every game it's like so you're telling me that we're, instead of getting rid of instead of getting rid of uh two preseason games and keeping 16 games we add on two regular season games and two of them are probably going to look like two preseason games Yes. For but th- and it could be just be for one team. That's the stupid thing. Is it could be just a super uncompetitive game because one team could use that game as one of their sixteen games where the starters every single starter's playing. Yeah. And the other one might be like resting all their starters for that one game. I don't like the idea. Just keep it how it is. I mean, I'm fine if you want to shorten the preseason a little bit. Yeah. Obviously, we talked about before the the 
the bad things about that, obviously, with guys, you know, you, you use the preseason for roster construction for your last final spots and, and battles at positions and stuff like that, and you would obviously be taken away from that a little bit. But maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, the starters really only play game three, and it's like for a half. Like, that's when they play the most. Doesn't Ben only do, like, but two drives? In, in game three? or Yeah, in game three. I don't know. I want to say he typically plays at least one quarter. A quarter. But. Which could only be two drafts. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But I don't know. I just, if you want to shorten the preseason, that's one thing. But the idea of adding two regular season games in place of it, I'm just, I'm not on board with. And especially the, the 16 game, that makes it even worse. It's like, I'm not on board with 18 games to begin with. But then you're going to add, or I'm sorry, shorten the, like, keep the, number of games that stars can play at 16 even though you're adding two games this doesn't make any sense like i said i have no idea how to even got to the point where this is like a legitimate but so would they would they shorten the preseason if they did 18 i i think so i think it would go to two okay so the season like where the season sits timeline would still be the same yeah and i think that that's the idea it would like, ju- the regular season would just start two it, weeks honestly earlier. it's literally just about money because you're not making teams aren't making money from the preseason really and you let them add two more regular season games. Now, I, I, you're also, like we said, probably paying more people, but that's still it's still beneficial for the teams. The teams are still going to make way more money doing that as opposed to the two preseason games. Yeah, I just don't see uh, – I mean, if I'm a player, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, no, I mean, Ramon Foster spoke out about it already. Did he? Yeah, like him and Colin Dunlap were talking about it because Colin Dunlap um, was said like – what are the advantages and disadvantages? And Ramon Foster was tweeting with him about it, and it was like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, hopefully it doesn't become a thing. Honestly, like I hope this is the last conversation I have about it. I hope I'm not sitting here in a couple weeks saying, "Well, it got approved." Yeah. Here we go. That's another thing. Would that go right into place next no. season, uh, or next not this season? upcoming season, but the one after? Yes. Or does it like take more time to? I I feel like they would absolutely go in. They they would they would announce it'll be next season, but they would take this season to figure out the details until they announce the schedule. Yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> it's like baseball getting rid of the get getting rid of spring training. We're gonna have 180 <laughs> something games, <laughs> but you can only play 162. Mm. That would be dumb. I mean, most people don't even play 162 as it is. Yeah. yeah. Very rarely they play more than 150. Limiting relief pitchers to like thirty appearances. <laughs> Turn into fancy. <laughs> um. All right. So switching gears now to hockey. Oh, no. We didn't. So this had already happened on the last episode where we had Jeff on, but we didn't talk about it at all, just because you know I knew when we talked about Kessel and Tanev, that was going to lead to J- Jeff just going off. Yeah. And by the way, um, rave reviews for that show. I know. He w- he was very good. Um, he was. So shout out to Jeff for coming on last week. Um, definitely felt like he just had like a natural knack of podcasting. So I don't know how often he's been on Dying to Live, if at all, or other podcasts. But uh, yeah, very good. Um, so Sullivan extension. We didn't talk about it all, but a four year extension. Um, I I mean I think that this was the next domino to get done, just because. I'm happy that there's not that cloud now going into the season where he's on an expiring deal and they brought in a new coach in the AHL and, you know, could this be the next guy to take – his name's Mike as well. Could this be the next Mike head coach for the Penguins? Um, And and it doesn't mean that he's going to coach all four seasons or anything like that, but it's it's a deal that I like. You're Doesn't even mean he he would finish this season. Yeah. You're securing (laughs) a very good head coach to a four-year deal. And like I said, the biggest thing is just now that's not – hovering around the season, you know, with everything that's already happened with the Kessel trade and everything like that, there's just been, you know, a lot of questions and talking now that's no longer is a question mark going into the season. So, I mean, I like the deal. I don't, I don't see any issue with it. Like you said, it does. it's a coach. You know, it doesn't mean by any means he's going to finish year one, year two, year three, or year four. So, yeah, like I think, I think it might have been you that quoted the tweet or responded to the tweet where you said – uh like what? Do you, what happens if the Penguins suck, and they want to fire him? And then Allen responded to you, and he's like, "Well, you just fire him because he's a coach." <laughs> yeah, I think somebody said, "Would it, is it a cold ta- or is it a hot take to say he won't make it th- through?" I think it was David said like twenty twenty one. I said, 
well, what if they? What happens if they suck this season? And I, like that yeah. was a re- that was a rhetorical question. Yeah. But Allen was like, you they just fire, fire him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like. I just sense more loyalty for some reason to Sullivan. Where like they where the, it wouldn't even. I can't see him getting fired next season. I mean, the same loyalty was there for Balsma. It yeah for a period like and then it finally snapped. Yeah. Yeah. So but it's still they but had J- underachieving seasons man. for. Yeah. Multiple years in a row before that happened. But Jim Rutherford's just a wild card. Well, well yeah. He's the one that needs to be fired. Well, fired yeah. but, but, um I was about I, to say something dark. Never mind. Oh, no. We don't need any of uh, Pirate's Twitter, Pirate's Dark Twitter to come in here. <laughs> for Penguin's Dark Twitter. Pirate's, yeah, Dark, Penguin's Twitter? Dark Twitter. Pirate's Dark Twitter is just as bad. Yeah. I guess I don't know about their Dark Twitter. Uh, I don't even know if I want to bring up. What I saw, yeah, I'll bring it up. People already saw it. Everyone was quoting it after I quoted it. Somebody responded and said, I'm waiting for the day I wake up and hear that Nutting's plane crashed. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Beefy so like, Pirates yes. Twitter gets very dark for, for the people that are anti. Like the anti-Pirates Pirates fan. I will still stand by it till the day I die. Anybody that has that much uh, concern in sports needs to like reassess their life. I mean, why is can't he just say, "I can't wait till for the morning or for the morning I wake up and see that he sold the team"? Exactly. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't just want him to sell the team. He literally wants this man dead, <laughs> for for no reason because he's not <laughs> affecting your life at all. Um, oh, how did we get there? You dark. S- oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. was gonna say something dark, and it, it wasn't that bad at all. <laughs> anyway, it was definitely wasn't was that like, dark. Well. It wasn't that dark. Uh. Like I was just gonna say, maybe he'll like get pneumonia and can't be GM, and then just has to quit. <laughs> I I don't know, <laughs> just get sick and quit. Jeez. It's just I'm at the. I mean, they have basically the next guy in place. You feel like in Bill Guerin. Oh, absolutely. And honestly, like I thought he was gonna be. Uh, G- he he was probably gonna take over as GM before when his he got that three year extension. Wait, no, yeah. that was Botterelli. Botterell or yeah. Botterell still? Yeah. Well, no, I thought that before. Uh, whenever he got his extension, what last year? Yeah, no, Bottero I thought would take over when, like after they won the cup and G F uh, J R S contract was up, and then uh, they gave him a three year extension uh, once Bottero was in Buffalo. Yeah, but yeah, I wanted you know, like we said, you know, obviously Rutherford constructed two cup teams, fantastic. I wanted him to go out on a high note and give the reins over to Jason Bottero, who was has been the cap magician for years for them. Yeah. Um, and you know, kind of the voice in GMJR's ear as well. The voice of reason, if you will. Um, and even before that was Shiro, but um, and then you know he goes to Buffalo, and we have Bill Guerin. Well, okay, you know when GMJR is probably gonna you know be the GM one more year or something, and then he gets a three year extension. So I don't know, but once again, it's like he doesn't necessarily have to be the GM for those three years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't want him to be <clears throat> at all. I don't know. I mean, see. we we know we know that you know he can. He's a good GM for teams that are close, right there that are just missing one piece. Yeah, but he's good to win now. But once you yeah. win and there starts to be uh, cracks in the armor, he once ends up don't causing win. yeah. He ends up <laughs> causing bigger cracks. Yeah. Um, I mean, once again, like I feel like I've said it probably for three weeks in a row, but. We knew that we were going to lose pieces from those cup winning yeah, teams, but absolutely. that doesn't mean you change your identity. You just find new players that still fit that same style. Yep. And and even not even just talking about the style of play, but just like the contracts that are being handed out. Yeah. You know, like if you're going to sign Jack Johnson as you know an experiment or something, that's that's a that's a one year deal. Yeah. Why does he get five? Because we Brandon have to. T- Brandon Tanev, like anything more than three years is insane. Yeah. H- over under. How many times does Jim Rutherford freak out that Brandon Tanev never got a chance? Over uh, under uh, three and a half. Wait, when? Throughout the season. You mean never got a chance here? Yeah, like he did with Jack Johnson last season, where he was like, "Oh, they were out to get him once he signed." Blah blah blah. I I just don't see that happening because I think Tanev. See, is gonna be a good I'm player. not. A, I'm not. A, I have nothing. The signing, I have nothing against Tanev though. Yeah. That's the difference. I know the Jack Johnson signing. I had everything against him. And and Rutherford, like I, I think once the season starts and you're actually watching Tanev play, now I mean we all are gonna know what the contract is, but actually watching the games, I don't. That's not gonna enter my mind. I really. I mean I hope so. Like and as a fan, I, I don't think you're gonna be sitting there thinking, "Wow, 
I mean, wow, this, this guy's this guy's playing pretty well, but six years, three and a half million for him. <laughs> I mean, what like, if he, the, what if he does end up being that bad this season? Well, then yeah, I mean, then you fire the GM. <laughs> Tell Mario that. I, I don't know because that's that's totally different as a player, you know, than a than a coach or GM. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. They're, regardless, they're not moving on <laughs> after no, one year. No, um, I mean, they tried to on Jack Johnson, but could still be trying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that drunk conspiracy theory. But once again, going back to uh, what Jeff said last year, it's easier last to... Last year last week? Did I say last year? Yeah. Wow. Last week. He probably Feels said like it, last year. He probably said it last year, too. And what he said last week, um, you can bury a forward on the fourth line, which very well could be where Tanev plays. Oh, yeah. As opposed to Jack Johnson, regardless of where you put him with pairing, he's going to be noticeable. Yeah, he's going to be exposed. And uh, Tanev's still going to play his st- – like, I don't think Tanev is by any means going to be a bad player. I don't I don't foresee him having a season where I'm like, this guy's not rosterable. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. Jack Johnson, he's – Already not <laughs> rosterable. You can't have my roster. <laughs> um, Eric Branson is as low as I'll go. What was I going to say? It's I was going to say question. something. Then he kept talking. <laughs> That's okay. I'm used to it. I'll I'll think of it again. Normally it's the other way around. Normally I forget because I'm the one that can't talk. Um, couple more things relating to the pens. Uh, Matt Collin retires. Yeah. And basically going hand in hand with that, Teddy Bluter signs a two-year deal for 750k per season. Um, I like both those things. <laughs> yes. I, if yeah, I love Matt Collin. I always love Matt Collin. I'm happy he came back here and didn't finish in Minnesota. Um. Even though the years weren't that great, as you could finally tell that you know age was catching, catching up, up to him, yeah. where you know when we won those two cups, it didn't look like he he could, he was still producing. Yeah, he was still a very good player at that point. Um, but talking about Teddy Bluger, I wanted to see him take over last year for Colin, and I get you know that wasn't going to happen, guy in his last season. But um, I'm happy with both of these things. I'm happy that Colin retires as a Penguin, and I'm happy that Teddy Bluger's now going to be the fourth center. Mm-hmm. Um, and they signed to a two-year deal, seven hundred fifty k. I like it. I feel like he'll outplay that salary. Oh, absolutely. For the next, I mean, two that years. salary is low risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he signed it, even at a one way. He even said himself, he's not a lock. Yeah, which yeah, is crazy. He said, he's, yeah. he said, even though I have a one way contract, I'm. He still so has to play hard and he's very he's very humble. Teddy, you're going to be on the <laughs> NHL roster. Did Adam Excuse Johnson like play a couple games? You're, you're, you're four C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He might be his only competition. I right like, now. I like Adam Johnson too. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him on. Honestly, the you put him on the ice, he might be. You'd be hard pressed to find a faster skater on the Penguins. I feel like. Probably, I wouldn't mind seeing him on the wing, or the fourth line. I mean, there's so, but like. There's so many guys. Wh- what do you do with like Zach Aston Reese, who's yeah. not signed yet? But yeah. Who knows what's up there? Um, you you still got to figure a trade's coming. Um, but Russ, I, yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna assume Russ. And Schull, it's it's, it's kind of like at, at this point, it's kind of like how there was a calm before the storm with the Kessel trade. It's like that everyone really knew he was gonna get traded. It, no one just knew when. And then now I feel kind of like the same thing with Russ. I feel like I know he's gonna get traded. I don't know when. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, okay, so say Rust is traded. How does the how do the lines shake out at that point? Um, what I want or what I think will happen? Uh, what do you think will happen? Because I think McCann will be on the first line and not Simone. Agreed. But I would put Simone at on the first line. At least to start. However, I will do with what I think will happen, and I will say Crosby, Gensel, McCann, Malkin, Galchenyuk, and... Um, move back up. I would say probably Hornquist. I'm gonna say Cahoon. Or actually, no, I forgot he was. A, I I forgot he was a player. Cahoon. <laughs> I I forgot he was on our roster. He's another one of those guys um, that ended up on the first line. At some and point. then you you have Simone Hornquist Bukestad, which is a really good line at the end of the year for them. Yeah. And then, um, Bluger. Uh. I guess Zach Aston Reese and um, uh, what's his name? Tanev. Tanev, yeah. What's his name? Yeah. So, I mean, even trading Rust, I'm not sure if I see a spot for Adam Johnson. Yeah. But Unless Sar goes with I him. mean, he might be the extra forward, but what's yeah. the point of keeping him on the on the mm-hmm. bench all year? 
Might as well have him play in Wilkes-Barre. Pretty much, yeah. Because you know we're bound to get some sort of injury. Oh, he'll, he'll probably yeah, be yeah I mean. He'll probably be called up soon, like sooner than later. Yeah. What and about the back the, end? The Zach Aston Reese situation still needs to figure out. But yeah. What about the back end? How is that going to shake out? Dumoulin, Latang, Schultz, Johnson. Good Branson. Good Branson and. Pedersen. Pedersen, probably. I'm actually not mad with that bottom pairing. I wouldn't even be mad about Gabranson in general if his f- cap hit wasn't four. What is it? Four million flat. I think it's four point three, or four point. I thought actually it might be four point four. It might be. Either way, I, I wouldn't be, be mad, about, that mad about him be- just because of how he played with us. If it was like Cheaper. two million, yeah. I, I I mean I wouldn't be mad at it if we didn't have Jack Johnson. That's literally. No, we only have room for one bad defensive contract. Yes. You still have Ruedel and Rachel on the back end too. And Ruedel's here and, for another two years. And right? um, looking at the forwards, Joe Blandisi is also yeah. He's you know one of the yeah bubble guys. Wilkesbury. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most like, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, no, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you I look at you the mean. NHL roster right now, it shows his name. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There's still a lot to shake out in the next what month and a half, two months. Honestly, I would trade a forward and I would trade a defenseman. Oh, absolutely. A defenseman, a specific one. That was number three. three. That switched to number three. <laughs> without or without the Penguins announcing it. Yeah. If somebody asked, they'll answer the question and say yes, he switched to number three, but they didn't they never announced it. I need to ask too, to anybody listening on YouTube or Twitch if there is anyone on Twitch. Um should I get the nameplate changed on my Mata jersey for shits and gigs? No. Why? Because Mata was a f- first round pick. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Twenty second overall. Oh, sir. That yeah, he was sure a first, first round pick, and so was Johnson. But Johnson's shit. I know. I was to say, if we're just doing based off the first round pick. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Mata produced more. He did. Than Johnson ever did. He did. Mata has two cups. Johnson has shit. <laughs> I kind of just want to do it for for the giggles. I would wait till somebody else wore number three. I mean, if you if <laughs> yeah. you switch it and then light it on fire, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I might do that. That might be worth it. Um, non Penguins related stuff. So, Coyotes trade for Phil Kessel and ticket sales, season ticket sales, go up five hundred and fifty percent. How low were they? I have no idea. I mean, probably pretty low. They had one guy with season tickets. Yeah. <laughs> so one guy that was an OEL fan. It was just like yes. <laughs> so they, was like, they, they got 549 more people. It was like <laughs> the the guy in um on Family Guy yeah, watching the WNBA yeah. game. Yeah. The WNBA <laughs> game. Um not too much to say about that other than good for them. That's Im- that's impressive. I mean, they stuck they stuck around last year for quite a bit I in the wild card race. I still think they should have made the playoffs, but Who's there is there their goalie still Ranta. Ranta. Yeah. I can't remember who's behind him right now. It w- who was it last year? Wedgwood? Wedgwood was there for a bit, and there was someone else. They were, they honestly made no sense how they were still in it. Well, yeah. Their leading scorer was what, OEL? Um, um, like Clayton f- Keller. Oh, yeah, that's right. He had like 50-some points. The next, oh, yeah. was, the next was OEL with like yeah. 35. So looking at their roster. Oh, Darcy Kemper's there. Ah, yeah. yeah. So looking at their roster, it like... Now, Kessel would have been their leading store, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second, with what they have now, Carl Soderberg. I forgot they got him. He had 49 points last year. Clayton Keller Thanks. had 47. OEL had 44. <laughs> wow. Hina Stroza had 39. Where is... Kalchenyuk? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was say he's on the Penguins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dvorak only played 20 games for them. Yeah, I feel like okay. he was hurt. Yeah, he, he only had seven points. <sighs> Rough. I still wish we got Chikrin. Step on, 35 points. Wow. Well, Kessel's going to be the leading scorer, probably. If he can score. <laughs> Who knows if he'll get the puck. Yeah, it's they're going to have to draw some penalties. Yeah. Um, Anisimov for Zach Smith trade. What do you make of that for both sides? How do you feel about I mean, Chicago? I mean, it sucks for Chicago because they got you. <laughs> but I like how we took that the same <laughs> way, just two different ways. 
Um, um, it, I mean, it's a it's a move. Ottawa has to <laughs> hit the floor. Yeah. I like <laughs> Anisimov more than Zuzna. I was say. Yeah, Anisimov is fine. He did really good with my on my fantasy team two years ago. Cause yeah, he was on I say two years ago he had like a breakout year yeah. last year. I don't know what the breakout and he's what in his like. Mid-30s. Well, last I'm year, just saying okay, an anomaly. Year. Last yeah. year he wasn't on Kane's line anymore. Mm. So that affected him. This they moved, year, they moved him down to the third line. Two guys that probably just got created on NHL 20. He'll be playing with <laughs> is Brady Kachuk a center? No, he's a winger. He's left wing. Then he'll probably be playing with Brady Kachuk. He'll probably be their top line center. Oh, God. Poor Brady I mean, okay, uh, never think mind. Of, I don't think, like of, think of the rest of the roster. Who's yeah. Who else would be top line center? The only other person I can think of right now besides Zaitsev is Thomas Chabot. Zaitsev is a defenseman. Yes, I know. That's he's what not, I'm saying. <laughs> he's talking about their roster yeah. in general. Uh-huh. Um, Tierney? Ah, Chris Tierney's there. He would have been second in points. <laughs> he had a 48 points last year. 39 assists. Whoa. Hmm. But uh, but he's a center, so. Either way, not really good. Colin White? Nah. Hard pass. That just sounds like a bad name. That was a Were you talking that, to the end yeah, of the that night? Was, that was mic? weird. End of the mic? I was talking into the side. That was weird. He's only 22. He had 14 goals, 27 assists last year. Yeah, so, so is Herb. He could probably play on the Senators, too. I'm not 22. Oh, you're 21. Yeah. Never mind. He'll be 22 in October. <laughs> so and he could probably play on the in Senators. In October, you could play on the Senators. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Eugene, I'll take minimum. I'll take league minimum, 700,000. 700, yeah, plus it's Canada, so. Um, We already kind of touched on Ryan Dezangle signing with the Canes after saying he wanted nothing to do. Dude, <laughs> no <laughs> one wants anything to do with Columbus. It's like uh, Yarmo. Peace. I saw an article that they spoke to Marner's agent about an offer sheet. <laughs> and I was like, good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marner's going to be like, you know, it's good money, but it's Columbus. I mean, I, yeah, I don't even think he would sign it. I don't either. Has, I was about to ask, has somebody ever not signed an offer sheet? Oh, absolutely. Well, you don't hear like, about them. Yeah. Okay. If they don't get signed, typically you don't hear about them. Which is why whenever people were talking about the uh, – the Aho offer sheet. Mm-hmm. I was listening to Tim and Sid on, from Sportsnet, yeah. and they were saying like there could be multiple offer sheets a year, and no one ever knows about them because yeah. they don't get signed. I would totally be leaking it. Yeah. the The one thing about the Aho offer sheet is everyone was like, "Oh, why did the Canadians do that? That was so dumb." They actually did it the right way. They front loaded the hell out of that contract, so the can- so the Hurricanes have to pay much more money than they probably should. They yeah. they hand. did it. They did it the right way in ter- if the they actual didn't cash actually pay out yeah. is a lot more money. Exactly. They did it the right way in terms of it was something they knew was going to get matched. They were just making Carolina pay more. Yeah. If they actually wanted him, then they would have upped it. They would have yeah. upped it. They to just at least didn't want to give up the draft picks either. Say yeah. that it were to not get matched. Yeah. So they front loaded the hell out of it, and we weren't going to give up the draft picks. <laughs> yeah. Or as many draft picks. I should say. Trade yeah. Rust Johnson and Branson off sheet Marner. Who says no? Jesus Christ. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> it, my, friend, my, friend Anth- my friend Anthony was trying to convince me that they should offer sheet Marner somehow. Marner. Uh, Marner. I was like, there's no way. There's no possible way. There's no physical way. We're, we can't pay a player $12 million. Because <laughs> that's what it's going to like. He's, he's it not w- getting more it, than nine. It would. Uh, from who? Anyone. Yes, he is. Mm-mm. I guarantee he will get more than nine million. Nope. I guarantee he will get double digits. Nope. I will put why he's not I will a center. Put, I will put my name on. He was getting at least ten million. Nope. Then he's getting offer sheeted by someone else. Nope. Aho's not a center, and look what he got. And look at Marner's production compared yeah. to Aho's. Canadians have cap I, room. Nobody else wants to pay Marner anything close to ten million. I don't. I have, believe, no, I, I don't, I have no I don't, idea why. I don't believe that. I have no idea why. I. Don't, I no one's going to pay him that plus give up four first round picks. Yeah, but a team is going to—it's probably going to be the Leafs. They're going to pay him double digits. No, we're going to be talking about this in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's going to be eight million. Th- he, he won't sign that. You want to bet? I, I, yeah, I do. Okay. I why do the hell would he sign for eight million dollars? Because he's not getting ten. I, he's not getting anything over ten. Why wouldn't he get ten? He's been the leading scorer on the to. team for three years. But he's not going to. Give me one second. What are we betting on this? I don't know. <laughs> Nor do I care. Well, you you two like to make bets. I want to get in on it. <laughs> As you can see, none of those bets have followed through. 
Well, none of them have happened. Uh, the Coyotes won. The, the they didn't won. make the playoffs. Well, no, it was back. It was it was split. If they didn't make it, I'd do something. If oh. they made it, he had to do something. And we just well, no, I'll follow through. Because <laughs> he's getting ten million. He's not. I just don't see how. Like, why do you think that? I just, I just don't see it happening. Why? I just don't. Like, I have no reasoning. I just don't see it happening. I just don't get why. Who are the teams that can do it? Senators, Columbus, Colorado. Jamie Benn. Ovechkin, Patrick. I'm looking at wings that make more than $10 million. Ovechkin makes more than 10 Yes. What? Wow. Welcome to 2019. Yeah. <laughs> How does Jamie Benn also make His Ove- salary is $10 million, and he signed it before the eight the cap, years yeah. thing. So his contract was for 12 years. Also, <laughs> Ovechkin... While we're while you're looking that up, Ovechkin is the wait fucking Artemi Panarin this year. How much did he get? Eleven point six seven. Six seven. Yeah, I thought he signed for nine point eight. No, he took he took less money to go to the Rangers than the Islanders offered him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's but why so I thought it was nine point. While while we were looking it up, um, you're looking that up. Ovechkin is the amba- NHL ambassador to China now. Six of the top fifteen contracts. I don't know. <laughs> six, of the, six of the top fifteen contracts in the NHL are not centers, or are not are wings, but not centers. So there's also two goalies in there, and some defensemen. So who's the goalies? Bobrovsky and Carey Price. Oh. But so. Forgot about Carey Price. Artemi too. Panarin makes eleven point six. Oh, eleven point six four two. Um, Patrick Kane makes ten and a half. Uh, Vegkin makes ten. Jamie Ben. Makes ten point five. Mark Stone makes nine point five. Mark Those Stone. are all in the top fifteen. Defenseman Carlson obviously. Mark Stone yeah. makes nine point five, and you're telling me you, that Marner's not going to get ten. I mean, Vegas should not have signed him to that. <laughs> but you gotta also realize the cap's going up, so players get paid more now. Yes, but again, I'm going to say this: Who has the cap room, and who actively needs something like that? Who has the cap room? All right, let's look it up. Who actively needs him though? Columbus. They don't have anything else. They have Seth Jones and Zach Warinsky. Exactly. So they need him. Okay. And they have the cap. Okay. A team that needs him to actually make the playoffs and not just flounder in the middle of the league. Colorado. That one I can see. I don't know how much. And the thing is, uh, teams can just bone them. Oh, yeah. By offer sheeting him too high. Yeah. Because uh, I, teams can offer sheet for him. And if they if they offer sheeted him for like $12 million, then the Leafs would be boned because how are they going to match that? Well, Colorado yeah, is the perfect team to do it. I because they with can't that. If, if he does if Toronto doesn't match it they can do it, and if they do match it you just bone Toronto. <laughs> it's a win win. I love the phrasing. Again, I'm going to say it. I have absolutely no reasoning. I'm just that's what that's my guess. I just wish you had reasoning. No. <laughs> I can hear you just rubbing your face in the mic. Because uh, if it t- if it takes trading Nylander to sign Marner, they would trade na- trade Nylander in a second. Now he's changing. And I truly league. believe that. Should have signed him. I don't think they should have signed him for as much. I don't know why they gave him that much. Because he wouldn't have signed otherwise. I also find that somewhat hard to believe. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's an outside actor. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. That was pretty much the last thing in hockey. I uh, was something else that happened. No, um, I don't remember. Slava Voinov signed a one-year deal in the KHL, so he's not coming to the NHL. Yeah. yeah. Well, isn't he still technically suspended mm-hmm. for how long? Yeah, he used to be suspended for this whole season, and yeah. then yeah. So he was like reinstated, right? Mm-hmm. But it was still he's suspended for the year. Yeah. But would that when you have to be under contract for that suspension to start? Yes. Okay. So he's still going to be suspended for a year. Yeah, and who's to say somebody's going to sign him? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. So I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's very possible he's not even going to come back at all. You could reinstate him all you want. Yeah. But, um, what are you still looking at? Um, I'm, I was trying to find NHL. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. How much money you have. Cash base. <laughs> I what is it with forgetting the simplest things today? Smitty with Skype, you with yeah. Capspace. I don't know. <laughs> what am I gonna forget? I'm like, I'm like, 
It's like, okay, it's a salary cap, but what's the cap? Sp- I was like, what's the word for how much money you actually have? And I couldn't <laughs> think of it. Space. We looked this up. I mean, well, we did it before the free agency. Yeah. But I don't, I mean, Colorado, is there, if they really, I mean, they I mean, right now, Ottawa and Colorado would be the there lowest. Are, right? There are still six teams with double digits in cap space. And that's the that Flyers, sense. Blue Jackets, Avalanche, Devils, Senators, Jets. Devils. Why couldn't the Devils offer Sheet Marner? <laughs> Who are their forwards right now? Hughes. Uh, Jack Hughes. Taylor Hish- Hall. Nito Heeshear. Uh Wayne Simmons. <laughs> oh yeah. Um Miles Wood. Kyle Palmieri. Travis Zajac. Uh Blake Coleman. Pavel Zaka. Oh. Never heard of Blake Coleman in my life. And John Hayden. Oh, yeah, that trade happened. Yeah, they could definitely do it. Still don't see it happening. I don't see him getting off sheet. I just see him getting signed for at least $10 million. Okay. <laughs> Smitty. That was in the NHL, so. Okay. Um, oh, God. We have to talk about this, I guess. So, since the All-Star break, the Pirates are 1-5. <laughs> uh, basically, for the last... Just peeling off the Band-Aid right off the... <laughs> <back>. <laughs> so, for the last two or three weeks, it's been like... Every week, we say one thing. That week of baseball completely changes the direction that they should go. Okay, this team sucks. They need to fire everyone. They need to trade everyone. There. Yeah, they I go never said and fire five. everyone. <laughs> they, I will. They go eleven and five, and end up two and a half back at the deadline. Like I mean, on our last show, I said it was pretty. Like, it's exciting, you know. Enjoy it while you can. Mm-hmm. You never know how long it's gonna last, and well, it, it lasted, lasted another week. week. Yeah. <laughs> um. But so this, I don't want to say completely changes what I what I would do. Um. Because personally, for me, it's y- you're trading Dickerson, um, and uh, I mean Lyles is just hurting his own value and what the Pirates will get in a return. But yeah. Melky's up there too for them to move. Probably, if they were going to be like contending this year, I would have kept him but traded yeah. Dickerson. Yeah. Uh, if you're not going to be in competition, there's no point in keeping him. Yeah. Um, I I might be in the minority on this, and it has nothing to do with the player. I I would listen on Marte. And I know I know that Twitter is probably going to come at me after they listen to this and it has nothing to do I I love Twitter Marte. listens to this? I think he, yeah. I think <laughs> he's I think he's still the best overall player in this team. Um but what is the point of having that type of player? And, and I mean I know he has a couple of years of control but I think that's yeah. what makes it so attractive. Now you have to you know, blow. Me. I'm not saying sell him just to sell him. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you need say to, to blow you. Blow me away <laughs> with an offer. Yes. You like cut um, off your own sentence. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. Well, this doesn't like, sound very like, funny. Then I didn't well, notice. Well, you have to blow me, and then you start <laughs> saying, <laughs> "This is gonna be a great episode, right?" <laughs> just for that. So somebody, uh, somebody, clip that. The title is "Blow Me." <laughs> um, that's what Neil Huntington says to, t- to GMs. You have to blow me. That's <laughs> why I listen. I would want to listen on players when they have that so control. So basically, you're in the same place as Vasquez. Yes. If the offer is that good, you take it. Yeah. But if it's not, but but the thing is with Vasquez, I mean, I'm definitely listening on him. If that if a trade with the the, the weird thing is, I'm only hearing the Dodgers. Yeah. But if a trade, you know, were to materialize where we're getting, you know, why you're only hearing the Dodgers? Their bullpen has been horrible. Kenley Jansen gives up a run every time he comes in. They're horrible. Yeah, you can't pitch him in a one run. How game is for how is that team they're like thirty team. games over five hundred right now? They're the best team in the MLB, but they don't have a bullpen. Mm-hmm. Their starting pitcher is just their backs hurt. Well, <laughs> that, and they just outscore everyone, yeah. too. It's like the Red Sox yeah, last year. Yeah. It's like, but sure, say, our, bull, our bullpen can give up, like, three or four runs, but we put up, like, 15, so we mm-hmm. win. Yeah. My thing with Vasquez is, I mean, if that deal's there with the Dodgers or with anybody, if you're getting four of their top eight prospects, yeah. whatever it might be, then I'm doing it. But the th- I also feel like you can get that same deal for Vasquez next year. Yeah. More than likely. So I I don't think that there's any motivation to move him. Yeah. But if the deal's right, the deal's right, and that that's where I'll leave it with him and with Marte. I mean, 
Uh, it's going to be tough to see Marte play for another team, but it just why keep him if if you're t- not going to be good? Yeah, and I mean I said it before the season. I think their windows the time while Archer's here, um, at least as of right now, that could all change. Yeah, but. And they gave him they're not they gave him they gave themselves that window by making that trade yeah exactly in the Kella trade and you know it's unfortunate that Kella hasn't pitched this year yeah um, and he's, he's a guy that good in AAA he's a guy that you'd probably be relying on for example yesterday to come in and face Dolchmit with the mm-hmm. guys on base so and instead you did a Mike Mike Feliz had nine scoreless innings in a row but yeah. I still I had a feeling I was like I even Jamal and I were texting and we said best case scenario this is tied right. after this inning yeah um, I mean I I tweeted it yesterday I'll say it again I still think my statement in March is true. Liriano should not be on this team. It, I mean, he's definitely gotten a lot shakier, worse. Yeah, since I mean, I would still trust him to come in and just go lefty on lefty. But when he, when you're bringing him in to face three batters to start an inning, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's not lefty on lefty. I, yeah, I don't really have the trust level isn't there, yeah. and that's with most guys in the bullpen. That's like, I mean, we can get on Clint all we want for you know the bullpen mismanagement and how he's tossing them games. I don't know how many guys are in that bullpen right now that you can hand the ball to and say yeah. they get three outs. And that that also is going to make sense for this statement. Relievers are so hit and miss, which yeah. is why when they're well, good, look, you should look trade at, them. Look at Rich Rod now. Yeah. He's back to being Jesus Rod. Yeah, what he was last year. Yeah, ever since he's dressed up as Jesus. Because I was, I was. I'm not kidding. <laughs> in hindsight, I was like very upset that they didn't trade him last year. Yeah. Because I felt like Dickerson and him to Cleveland made all the sense in the world. And then he comes into this year and was shaky, and I'm like, okay, well, we just threw away a, a trade chip from last year to get nothing from him this year. Um, but he's actually regained form, and maybe that's a guy that, you know, you listen on this year again, too. What was the trade to Cleveland? What was coming back our way? Oh, it was just my own hypothetical. Oh. I didn't see that anywhere. Mm. I just I felt it made all the sense in the world because the Cleveland, is, once again, needs an outfielder this year, but they needed outfielders last year plus – I mean, who doesn't need what? What contender doesn't need a bullpen arm? Like yeah. you can always use them. So I saw we could probably make, trade Rich Rod and Felipe to the Dodgers. Yeah, I saw someone make a hypothetical for Vasquez to the Dodgers, and I don't know names, but we got um, Dustin May, Davin Lux. Yeah, it was it was their number one. Uh, Ruiz. It was their number one, three, and six or seven prospect, and then Ruiz. Okay, Ruiz is like eight too. Or, yeah. Kiebert. I don't know. I just know we ha- we had like multiple in the top ten or top eight. Um, let me look at the Dodgers top thirty right now. I know. They're By the way, the past the past three games, Jeff has been he's pitched more than two innings and shut them out. <laughs> yeah, I I was gonna say I wanted to bring up. Um, I, I mean we don't cover the minors too much on yeah. here, even though we probably should because that's our our biggest connection. Um, but yeah, it seems like they're like. Like you said, he's working multiple innings now for some reason. I don't know if that's something. They've been getting blown out down there. By the, yeah. Well, but that that too. The starting I, pitching has not been good. I wonder if that's something with the with you know the Pirates are trying to do down there with him, make him you know a multiple innings guy. Yeah. I mean, um, like a long so long reliever. What I saw was Ruiz, Ruiz number yeah. who's number one, Dustin May, who's number three, Jeter Downs, who's number I seven. I love Jeter Downs actually. He and came then in the rich trade. there was the, there was a fourth person, but I don't think it was a prospect. Oh, okay. Um, also, the thing we said with Jeff before he got or when he got sent down is he needed to work on control. He has three walks in his past ten games. Nice. Yeah. Um. So, a hypothetical trade with the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, one, you got to get a catcher back. The catching absolutely. And Eve, I understand that's not going to be you know plug and play with these guys, but um, our catching situation is Who's terrible. The, the highest rated is Dion, right? Yeah. What's he at, 23? System. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure if he's still in the top 30, to be honest. But that's saying something about the catching situation yeah. in the majors and minors. Like, there's not, you know, a guy that you know for sure is the future at catcher. Yeah. Because And it's not even like – Diaz obviously hasn't been good this year. But even, you know, you looked at the year he had last year, and I don't think people realized he's 28, 29 years old. And yeah. same thing with Stallings. It's not like these guys are young guys. Maybe. So you still don't have the future at that position. Don't worry. Yes, Monty Grandel is our catcher so, next season. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're doing that, you don't need to make the trade. Actually, no, I I kind of agree with David. I think Tyler Flowers would be our catcher next yeah, season. Yeah, and I even said, you know, I'll give up a good portion of the offense just after watching how bad our catchers are at framing and everything just to get a guy that can steal strikes. Yeah. He's not in the top 30. Yeah. Okay. It just, I mean, is that 
Who who's are you looking at? Pirates. But I mean, this isn't the MLB uh, pipeline. Yeah. Okay. So I I'm looking at pipeline too, but this actually isn't even like the updated one because I know Fangraphs did one after the draft, so like pre uh, yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. He's what four? Yeah, f- I think I somewhere in the forty six. He's, he's looked really good. Yeah. Which is a nice change of pace for yeah the high school first round pick down there because I mean you know nothing against Shane I love him but he obviously didn't get off to the greatest start no. pitching down there and same with Jennings so hey, so m- the thing now is people like Deion Huntington for not being a great great GM mm-hmm. I think they're wrong personally uh, you could point trades out but you could also point the trades that he's absolutely won and they're, they're trades that's how it happens you yeah. you win some you lose some. His drafting after coming in was solid, taking over for Littlefield because Littlefield is literally one of the worst development development type GMs out there, or whatever he is with the Tigers now. Now is where you're starting to see the weaknesses in Huntington's drafting or their scouting. So, yeah, that, that's my opinion. I've said multiple times I'd like to see this round of scouts just. Kicked out the door, bring in new ones. If it stays the same, then a th- then NH can go. Yeah, that's my personal way of going about it. Yeah, and I think they do a, a great job internationally. Oh, absolutely. So I mean, yeah, it's really just the, and you don't even know if it's the drafting. It could be the development of the guys. Yeah, but yeah, something just there isn't. At least to like a star level, you know, you're seeing a lot of draft picks come up now and be like at least contributors at mm-hmm. the MLB level. Yeah, with with Newman and and Frazier and well, obviously with the season Bell's had, but um, you know, they there there's a lot of homegrown pieces that are at least MLB players. Yeah, now, but yeah, there's just they're not developing that star, I guess. Yeah. You know, when do we get our? Uh, Cody Bellinger. You seem to think it's Mason Martin. I, I still think if he can put okay. together, it'll be him. I was who, excluding pitchers. Is Cutch the last one where we're like, okay, we drafted him and we know he's going to be good. I mean, you could say Bell, but I mean, he didn't get. I mean, he got off to a hot start, but after that, ah. Also talking about the Steelers. I'm I mean, he's having right a good season, but I'm not going to say he's a. S- yeah, I you mean, know, I I, I would want to see. I'm not going to put him on Cutch level yet. I would want to see this again next season. Yeah, exactly. Because we saw, he actually didn't start out too great at the, right at the beginning, first mm-hmm. couple weeks, but then he turned it on, had a ridiculous May. May. Uh, average June. June, he hit Below like two. Below average. Of, June, he hit, <laughs> his bat, if you're doing by batting average, he hit two yeah. to six. Yeah. But, I mean, he still was collecting extra base hits, enough to stay on top there. Mm-hmm. Um, hitting the ball over the fence every once in a while still. But then July, the first, Kicked the right beginning of July was fantastic. Then we hit the all-star break. Now he's had a couple of offers and sat yesterday. It was the Homer Derby. But, oh my God. <laughs> Shouldn't have done but, it. How funny. If, if he sucks the rest of the season, I'm absolutely going to latch on to that narrative. Absolutely. I'm trying to th- I, I mean, I don't know what anybody else is doing since the Homer Run Derby, but the, the win, Pete Alonzo, who Pete won Alonzo it, doing, yeah. <laughs> has been very good. Yeah. He hit his furthest home run last night. It went like, you know how. Uh, 450 something. 474. <laughs> so you know how. Target field is for the twins. How there's like three levels to it. Yeah, it went halfway up that la- the third <laughs> level. Oh, yeah. Imagine being able to hit a base. Like I don't even know what I'd do. You'd probably play a baseball. I'd prob. <laughs> no, I'm saying if I if I was him and hit that home run, I'd probably start taking my shoes off, walking around the like I'm just making a whole spectacle. About You're just going nude. <laughs> yeah, around the base. Yeah, streaking. We're doing uh, streaking. Man. So anyway. Um, I've kind of already said what I would do. You're def- I'm definitely trading off the free agents after the season. Yeah. And by all means, listening on Marte and Vast, any- really, anybody can offer me something. Like, blow me away once again. No pause there that time, though. Um, I'll listen on anybody. But for sure, anybody that's a free agent after this year, I'm, I'm dealing for whatever I can get. So yeah. I don't know where you guys stand. I never really changed my stance from like a month ago, so I don't really have to say much. I mean, I'm that same way. Even even when they were well, even when they said they were doing very well, I still the, wasn't really the like m- the, the most where mentality. I was at was if you're going to be buyers. I mean, more so stand pat, but if you're going to be buyers, it no rentals. Like no, it's got to yeah. be somebody with yeah. control. Exactly. You know, no Madison Bumgarner. No. If it's going to be Strowman, because he has next year. Bumgarner's stupid anyway. Yeah. Just off the cuff, that's stupid. Strowman at this point, nah. Strowman doesn't make sense for them now either. Yeah. But, you know, if they were going to continue 
say they go five and one over these six as opposed to one and five. And we just go back to where we were before the All Star break. Then, what do you mean? Because they're one and five now. If they no, go no, five I'm saying one. they didn't have the one and five oh, stretch. Oh, it was five and one. Uh, and six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that'd be interesting. Then you know maybe you can talk about. It. It's just crazy how that sm- like small sample size of games just totally changes everything because it's against the teams that you're chasing. Yeah. So you're either gonna so each game counts as two games really. So you're either gaining that much ground or you just continue to lose ground, and that's why an eleven and five stretch was completely wiped out by a five or six games. Yeah. I mean, I still think this division's gonna be up in the air way till the end of September. Um, I think it'll be up in the air between possibly three teams. I think, I think five. Yeah. I just feel like, well, it depends though on what the teams decide yeah. to do because yeah. if the Pirates and Reds do decide to sell, then they're probably not going to be as competitive down the stretch. Yeah. But well, if all teams do, you know, kind of stay right where they're at, if all teams stand pat, then, I mean, yeah, I would think it's still, you know, at least within six games of each other from top to bottom. Yeah. We're in six and a half right now. What happens <laughs> if they do sell? Let's say they do trade one of Marte or Vasquez, mm-hmm. and they do get that big return, and they somehow manage to still be contending into September. <laughs> Could it be the yeah. biggest blessing in disguise that they sucked in July? Yeah. I mean... Because suck, arguably sucking last July would have been better than mm-hmm. doing anything. Right. Instead, they had to have a five-game sweep before the All-Star break. Don't get me wrong. I was, I mean, I was happy. Oh yeah, absolutely about it. I mean, they had an eleven-game win streak total. Yeah. So, but and when they traded for Archer, I was just and it, and it goes back to it really shouldn't play into it, but just like fan perspective does actually mean something. I mean, that's why oh, people, absolutely. even though you know, so happy to have Reynolds and Crick, that's why the touch trade still kind of hurts. It's just like there's that's the emotional part that plays yeah. into it, but. Um, looking at the Archer trades, just like finally they they did something, mm-hmm. you know, like and, and that's my thing because I remember saying the day it happened, all these people that want to bitch and moan about the Pirates not going for it or not trading prospects at that moment when that trade happened, you cannot bitch about this trade. And guess what they're all doing, bitching about the trade. Well, I mean, at this, I, I agree to an extent, but at the same time, fans aren't the ones that are like you can't as in a GM or whatever have that emotion play into it. Like you have to be thinking with your GM hat on, not your fan. But hat. I think he was. And well, no, I'm not saying that he was, but yeah. I'm saying it was still. It, it turned out to be a fans bad are train, still you know? fans. And I don't think that you can say. Yes, I know, but there's also a general common sense that I like to think the world still has. But um, no, okay, but I'm saying as a fan, I think I don't think you can say, looking at it now that you didn't hate the trade just because you liked it then because they finally did something. Because I, I liked the trade then, but it obviously sucked. I mean, I, and I, I don't think... I'm not saying you can't change your opinion on it. I'm just saying if you're the person that gets mad because they weren't doing anything and then they did something that you wanted, you automatically just don't have room to, oh, right, yeah. to wiggle. But you can still say the trade sucked. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but the, but like people act like they didn't say at the moment that that trade was the best thing that's ever happened to the Pirates because there were people saying that because idiots Mm -hmm. that are now ripping everything. In the reverse side of that, like like we're talking about, you know, with trading Marte and Vasquez and, um, you know, potentially going into a rebuild again, which is personally what I would rather see um, than just, you know, trying to to stay around 500 and luck yourself into winning 90 games. Um, But the problem with that would be, as we've talked about, the the general fan not understanding that and yeah. you know this team might already have a, a brief shelf life left in Pittsburgh anyway yeah um but I, so can we really as a fan base as a t- as a whole not us but as a whole survive another full rebuild probably not I mean you saw I mean the general like, fan doesn't really care about the team whether they Unless they're winning 90 games anyway. Yeah. I feel like general fans probably don't care about the team right now. They don't. Yeah. They might care about Josh Bell, but yeah, they so don't that's care what I'm saying. It's already bad. And then how do you try to sell going into a rebuild again? You know, like I just, I don't know. I don't think, that, I mean, the, the attendance is actually somehow, I don't know if it still is, but it, it was up from last year. I mean, there was nowhere to go but up. And then, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was really with MLB in general. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just I don't see fans being able to back a rebuild as a as a whole. I mean, I don't, I don't see the team existing in this city no matter what in ten years. Like like no matter what, unless what they, if they magic- win the next ten w- World Series. Well, <laughs> unless they magically win a World Series, makes you think. I, I do think this team is the next Expos. Why did they get a team again? Montreal wants it, man. Yeah, but they already had one. Had one. I know. They had their chance. Yeah, okay, so Cleveland had a football team, <clears throat> and then they mm-hmm. went to Baltimore. Yeah, but that was because the owner. Yeah. Yeah. But then they got one back. Yeah. No, but I'm saying that wasn't like they they, they were supported in Cleveland. Cleveland oh. was actually pissed. Yeah. The owner wanted to move them. Yeah. So I mean that'd be like nothing saying I just don't want to be in Pittsburgh anymore. I'm not shaking my head. No, I'm shaking say- my. I'm tapping the wire of the headphones on my finger. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> but have I, you seen the the preseason games and the exhibition yeah, games? Yeah. Yeah. I think that city realizes what they had. Well, I, I feel like if you, if you give something to somebody, take it away, then they're gonna want it back. Yeah, absolutely. Now once they're there for a while. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah, they might not support it again. I like, mean, Tampa's not supporting their team. Yeah. They haven't really ever. They were in the World Series with 18,000 people there. Yeah. Good, oh, man. A um, couple other things to touch on. Uh, oh, oh, one more Pirates-related thing. Uh, Cervelli apparently has no plans to quit catching. Oh, DK. So. DK. Nice job on that. <laughs> he put up uh, a picture saying that, you know, he never said that. So what could he have possibly, did he say anything? You know, did he even it's DK. say anything to DK? Probably not. Like, <laughs> Somebody took shots at uh, <laughs> Rollison and uh, Parado. Really? Because of that. <laughs> I mean, you're, it's not. You're going after the wrong yeah, people it, there. It's not there. Yeah, it has nothing to do with them. It's all DK. Um, couple other things. Mike Miner likely to be dealt from the Rangers. He's yes. pissed about it. He said he feels like he signed there just to get traded. That's what it seems like. Duh. <laughs> I mean,. I kind of get what he's saying. He is on a two-year deal, so they could keep him. Yeah. You know, for next year, you don't have to trade him. You have the control. But at the same time, if you sign with a team that's not likely to contend on a short deal, you should and you notice. produce, you're probably. And why wouldn't you want to play for a contender? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I mean Mike Miners played for what? The Braves, the Royals, the Rangers. Did he play for the A's? Honestly, I don't know. I, the teams I, that you said are the only teams that I know. For he sure. pitched. He pitched for the Braves when they were bad. He pitched for the Royals when they were actually good. And then the Rangers are just not good. The thing is, they're they're only like four back to the wild card or something like that. The MLB so, is so weird. So yeah, so weird. And there's only with there only being one trade deadline. It's like you got to kind of make your mind up sooner rather than later if you're to be a. Is seller. that one trade dead, deadline not. this season or next? This, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, look at Mustakis last year yeah. when he signed that one year eight million dollar deal with the Royals. He they basically said it was he just flipped at the deadline. I mean, it, so yeah. It's logic. It's um, asset management. The Giants too. They're on like a hot streak right now, mm-hmm. but they're but they're still playing likely to be sellers. Yeah, yeah. If only the Pirates would have listened to it last year. Um, Homer Bailey got traded to the A's. Yes. Um, which other than Filipponi, I really didn't see link to the Pirates. I don't know where Filipponi got that. Hey, it's Filipponi. But it's just like DK. Just. But I guess that was technically because of him a name linked to the Pirates. He has been decent for like his last seven or eight starts, but that's yeah. really cherry picking. Yeah. His season as a whole, he is making absolutely no money. Yeah, because of being um, like essentially bought out. Like the uh, the Reds and Dodgers are still paying him. Yeah, whatever. So huh. yeah, he's there for the minimum. Um, another trade: Red Sox getting Andrew Kashner, who's actually having a ve- was having a very good season with Baltimore yeah. somehow. Pitching for Baltimore, pitching in that division, the AL in general, he was having he had a sub. Four ERA? Yeah, it was like three and a half yeah. almost. So that's pretty decent. Um, thinking like thinking about this conversation, I do want to see the Pirates do one thing, whether that be at the trade deadline or in the off season. Please, for the love of God, get a left-handed starting pitcher, like actual starting pitcher, not Stephen Brault, who can go back ba- and forth. I was about to, <laughs> I was about to say Brault. <laughs> I uh, mean, he's looked trade better. Trade for Mike Miner. I'm I'm not <laughs> mad at that. Um, but I would like to see that done because they've rolled with all righties for the past two seasons, and it's. Just this season in general has like, you look at the word rotation right now, and you think most of these guys are gonna be, it's like adding tie on. That's essentially what the rotation is. Wow. Next year and or Keller. You would, yeah, and 
who who are you excited about? Like Williams has come back and been pretty Not bad. Good. Yeah. Musgrove, you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. Archie, either you don't gonna, know what you're getting. Musgrove's either gonna go like six and give up no runs, or he's gonna seven get shelled. And implodes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Agrizals looked solid. I don't. And that, but that's another guy. It's like you right now it looks okay. Yeah. But he's pitching well above his FIP right now. He gets no strikeouts. Yeah. So it's just how long can that last? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like is it, is it Charlie Morton? <laughs> I was gonna say Trevor Williams from a couple of years ago. Like yeah. that's he's getting contact. It somehow is going directly at fielders. Yeah, or directly like, into the ground. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I'm wearing an Angel shirt. I wasn't even like planning on doing this for this, but uh, they threw a no hitter. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. And one of the yeah, like it was cool that they did like a live look in too, mm-hmm. so everyone who was watching. Want me to name everything to do it? That Every- happened during the game. Oh, the yeah. Angels game. So yeah. sure. his mom, Debbie Skaggs, threw out the first first pitch, and it was a strike, by the way. Yo, yes. What a pitch. Didn't bounce it. Well, she was a softball pitcher, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah I know. It was, it was lit. Uh, <laughs> then everyone wore 45. Then Mike Trout hit a 454, so 45, home run um, in the first inning, I think. Yeah, they put up seven. It was his first. Fir- first pitch that he saw. Yeah. And then um, they scored seven runs in the first inning and 13 runs total, and his birthday is 7-13. And then they throw a no-hitter. It's 11th no-hitter in franchise history. Skaggs wore number 11 in high school, and the last no-hitter in the state of California was on his birthday, the day he was born. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was after midnight when they got the final out and everything, so it was like on his birthday birthday here. yeah. 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 Weird. Then everybody put their jerseys on the pitch. Sports bounce. are so cool. That's still one sweet. of the better pictures I've ever seen. That's like we talk about, you know, how meaningless sports are in the grand scheme of things. But it's just it's moments like that that are why you watch sports and get into them. Yeah. It's for the moments that are that happen in sports that are bigger than sports. And D. Gordon was a part of that, and he was a hit the home run after Ho- Jose Fernandez. Yeah, and too. Justin Justin Bohr is on the Angels now. Yeah. Oh, team. yeah. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Like you j- I mean, you just read all the sil- like coincidences, but it's crazy to think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's about it. Chapman is going to opt out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Forgot about yeah, that. he said he came out and said that, that that he doesn't know where that came from. Oh, but they're mine. He's not opting but, out. But I mean, who's the? He's probably gonna opt out. He might opt out. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> he's gonna. You he'll heard probably, it here first. He'll probably opt out and then just resign with them for more money. Yeah, I'll say where else would he go? The Red Sox, the Dodgers. Dodgers. <laughs> hey, we we need a closer. That actually might. We need happen. a reliever. That might actually happen. Jansen, when Felipe, they, Chapman. When they lose their uh, third consecutive World Series, like we got to do something. <laughs> we got, from now on, our starters go in three innings, and then we're locking down with the bullpen. But their starters are good. It's actually just their bullpen that's yeah. bad. But so if you had a back end of Jansen, Felipe, and Chapman, where's Joe Blanton when you need him? No idea, honestly. <laughs> Zach, Duke, Zach Duke needs to bring him back I don't out know, of retirement. I don't know what Again. beach he's on listening to Zach Brown band, but that's what he's doing. <laughs> uh, Joe Kelly's there for way oh too much yeah. money. Yeah. The, um. Anyway, so we did – anybody that listened to our last episode, you know we did the Josh Bell autograph baseball giveaway. Um, the thing was you have to listen and reach out to us because we're not going to reach out to you. We want to give back to people that actually follow us and listen to the show and care about what we're doing, so – that person did not reach out to us from last week. So we pulled another name, and uh, you have uh, roughly a week. No. When are we recording next? No idea. Monday. Mon- oh, okay. So you only have On a few Monday. days. Okay. You only have a few days to listen to this and yeah. get back to us. Um, so Ryan, I, I want to say Gatto. Gatto. It could be Gatto. Gatto. Probably not. It's probably Gatto. Ryan I, have a fr- I have a friend with that last name. I okay. can pronounce it as Gatto. So you are the new winner of this Josh Bell autograph baseball. Um, hopefully you listen to this and are able to reach out to us before Monday. Because if not, on Monday we're going to pull another name. <laughs> um, I will be putting this episode up as soon as I get home. So it will be out from now until Monday for you to listen to. Um, 
So, yeah, reach out to us. Uh, once again, our pinned tweet on Twitter says it all. Rocking around the 412, year two is back. Um, we'll run until sometime in December, probably a couple weeks close, a couple weeks away from Christmas, so we have time to get everything. But, um, yeah, going to be giving Christmas to some kids of families that are a little less fortunate and can't do so. Uh, so excited to do that. As always, we are part of the Pod Hub Network. August 3rd. August 3rd. <laughs> Come to our 100th episode live that, event. Oh, we did the math. It is <laughs> actually 100. Yeah. Um, so to let everybody... That text was funny as hell. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> to let everybody in on something, we thought that we messed up in our 100th episode. It was actually going to be episode number we, 90, Wait, we? 98. We? Yes. <laughs> yes, we. Um, because when Herb sends me these, uh, they're numbered. But the wing bash ones that we've done were not. So why weren't they? I I originally wasn't going to include them. Yeah, oh. but so that that makes up for three shows. So I was like, wait, we are at ninety eight. So we are going to take uh, one week off. So we're going to be here next Monday, and then the that live next event. Monday, the 29th, will be off. Yeah, and then um, the live event on the third. Those yes. are the next two shows. But anyway, uh, we have the address on the flyer that we put out. Uh, we will have some food and drinks there, but anything that you want specifically, please bring. I'll probably supply the beer. Um, <laughs> we do have <laughs> some stuff that we're going to give away. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, we have those hats still. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, I have one thing that I'm not going to bring up that will be given away. Um, I think that's about it. Round the 4th 200th episode. Not quite our 10,000th yet, but... 2 o'clock. Man, there was a pun there. Around the four one two hundred episode, <sighs> around the four one two o'clock, be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's two o'clock at the address we said. Oh. It's, a, it's a real nice uh, parking garage lot type thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. But we're gonna be able to it's grill only stuff like there. Two blocks from yeah. Nancy Park uh, too. Three. Two blocks is forever for me, but your knees will be yeah. roasted. I'll bring you some pills. <laughs> Actually, never mind. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're following, Hold on, what kind of pills? If you're watching on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to hit that follow. If you feel generous, you can subscribe. Uh, everybody gets a free Twitch Prime sub per month if you have Amazon Prime or anybody you know has Amazon Prime. Link them together and give us that sub. Uh, if you're listening anywhere else, come follow us on Twitch. You can join us live. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And we'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. Body's been kissed by the sun. Coconut replaces the smell of the bar. And I don't know if it's her.